Thunder Lizard, Stony Eye, you got me hypnotized. Hot tongue breaks in and out, and I can't believe my eyes. And your soft white belly next to mine. Scaly baby, see you shine. Love me like a reptile, love me like a reptile. You're a murderer in disguise. Black mamba, murder in disguise. The lyrics there from the first Motorhead song I ever heard in my life. Love me like a reptile. It was under the pillow uh, with the earphone in Friday night. Uh, the Tommy Vance uh, Friday rock show. My life was changed forever. I would never be the same. Uh, it blew me away and I sort of became a lifelong fan uh, at that moment, really. And uh, But my journey sort of with Motorhead, I've, I've had years where I dropped off, to be honest with you. I think the last record that I bought sort of in real time was um, Orgasmatron. And then, you know, I didn't sort of follow them for ages, I suppose. And then one day uh, I was in a bar called Rock Rock. So Rock, heavy metal bar uh, here in uh, Osaka. And it was about two o'clock in the morning. I was a bit tipsy, had a few tipples. Uh, my friend Waka, who was working behind the bar, said, Oh, look, look, uh, Analog, he said. Um, just got the new Motorhead album on the CD. Let's have a little listen. It was uh, it was the year 2000, so it was uh, We Are Motorhead, and he put it on. And I remember sort of saying, Oh, Motorhead. Uh, I used to like that band. And I, I sort of caught myself. And I said, What are you saying? I used to like. And it sort of meant I'd... You know, I don't know, I've been sort of things have been going on in my life and I sort of hadn't followed them. So it was a joy to sort of go back and discover all the albums that I'd missed because there was, there was a lot of them, as you can sort of imagine. And so I really got up to speed and then I sort of started buying the uh, new records uh, as they came out uh, after that. But I've got a few things I want to say about uh, Motet before we... So what I've done, what I've done is I've sort of got all 23... Uh, studio LPs and I first of all let's rank them so yesterday uh, yesterday afternoon yesterday night I sort of got them all out and uh, I made a pile and I thought, oh yeah I'm gonna sort of rank them and I sort of woke up this morning and I thought ah, ah, I looked at the pile I was like well why did I put that there and why is that number five and this that and the other so but I didn't change it they're still the same pile as it was yesterday but so let's not focus too much on the ranking because um, it can sort of get a bit negative, kind of. And I want to be, I want to try and be positive. And I might say a few sort of cheeky things about a song or an album, this, that, and the other. But I sort of want to try and keep it more positive if, if, if I can. So uh, basically, we'll just sort of go through each record and sort of enjoy each record, have a look at it. And obviously, no time to do an in depth, uh, in depth review of uh, 23 studio albums, studio albums, no time for that. So it'll be. Fast and Furious, as I always uh, like to do it. Now, what was I going to say? It's going to say a few sort of little anecdotes uh, about Motorhead before before I got started. I think the first one I was going to say was I, I only saw them twice in, in my whole life. I only saw Motorhead twice. My mate Steve, um, he saw them on the Ace of Spades tour, and I was really jealous. He had a T-shirt and everything. I was angry, but I did get to see Motorhead on the uh, Killer tour, so got me revenge there didn't I uh, Steve if you're watching hope you're doing well I haven't seen you for about uh, 30 years but I hope you're doing well anyway what's gonna say I've only seen uh, Motorhead twice in my life both here in uh, Osaka once I did a bit of research because I couldn't remember the date and it was the 13th of October 2000 uh, at Umeda Heat Beat and I remember it was a weekday and it would have been on the see it was at the same time as Waka had just said the new album so it was the We Are Motorhead sort of tour and it was a week. It was a weekday night, and uh, I mean there was less than five hundred people there, and um, it was a bit disappointing. I'll, I'll be sort of. I'll tell you the truth. It wasn't uh, that great. But then uh, next time I saw them, see, I checked out the date again just to get it right. It was a little festival, heavy metal festival in Kobe near Osaka called Loud Park, and a lot of my mates went to that. A lot of my punk mates and everything. It was, it was a really good day out. Uh, I got a bit tipsy. I got a bit sort of. Uh, a bit, I got a bit frisky at the end of the night. Uh, Sorry, I wouldn't do that now. But um, 
And it was October 16th, 2010, so almost 10 years, almost exactly 10 years after the first time I saw him. It was at Loud Park. And now, the lineup for this thing was Kuni, uh, Turisas, not sure, Angra, no idea, uh, Spiritual Beggars. Now, I like that band, but I didn't appreciate them much on that day. And then Avenge Sevenfold, don't know, Loudness, the fantastic uh, uh, Japanese uh, metal band Loudness. They were great on that night. And then Motet, of course, and then Ozzy Osbourne was the headliner on that day. And by that time, I'd had a few too many tipples. So let's not talk about that anymore. Now, uh, yes, I wrote something yesterday. I was sort of on the internet a little bit, and people were telling me about their, their favourite Motet records. And I was like, oh, really? That's just a surprising choice there, and this, that, and the other. And there's a an internet message board that I've talked about before that I uh, spent way too much time on uh, in uh, sort of about eight, nine, ten years ago. Way too much time. It's quite ridiculous, really. Worse than Facebook. But uh, some good memories on there. And there's a, a big thread about uh, Motet on, on there. And uh, my friend uh, CC, who plays in the band uh, Magic Circle, great band. I'll talk about them at some point. Uh, he, he could do this better than me. He sort of, um, he can write very eloquently about Motet, he can sort of say things that I can't say. I'm just sort of a, a blithering idiot that, that doesn't really know what he's talking about. But anyway, I wrote something on that message board, and it was in January uh, 7th, 2011, and, and this is what I said. I said, I think it's easy to take pot shots at Motet stuff from the last 20 years or so. But when I was in the record shop today, and they were playing the new LP, I couldn't help but feel a warm glow. I was a 13-year-old boy living a miserable life at a horrible boarding school, and it was things like listening to Bomber that kept me alive. And here I am, 30 years later, a middle-aged man bumbling through life on the other side of the planet, and there I am being lifted by Lemmy in a freezing cold Tokyo winter's day. That's what I wrote in... Uh, January 27th, on January 27th, 2011, so obviously uh, that was a good day, wasn't it? Uh, one more thing, I was going to say, uh, I think last year uh, we had a big earthquake um, here um, in uh, Osaka, and I got back home from work and all my records, all of them were in a big pile on the floor, my furniture was everywhere, blah, 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 blah. and uh, amazingly, uh, no records were broken. It was absolutely a miracle. But uh, unfortunately, the shelf I had Motel records were on like two shelves, and both those shelves sort of fell in an awkward, in an awkward sort of way. And uh, pretty much every Motorhead record, none of the others, none of me White Snake, none of me Jazz, got damaged. But they all got corner dinged. Technical term there. And uh, someone said to me, "Oh wow." That was sort of an act of God. They were trying to sort of tell you something, sort of, oh, you should have listened to Motet uh, more when you were growing up and uh, you ignored them. And that's sort of God's punishment for not uh, listening. And I just think that's a lot of rubbish. But uh, anyway, without further ado, my friends, let's get into the 23. And I said, this is how I sort of ranked them yesterday. And uh, there's a sort of bit of a strange choices i suppose in the order but it doesn't matter does it uh so let's get to it but before we do that i just sort of wanted to show this uh this is the dutch uh version of the golden years record and when i looked at this yesterday it sort of made me remember that all three of these uh blokes on the cover well they're not with us anymore are they and sort of someone from my generation so uh, it's quite sad and well, it's not quite sad it's really sad because you know they're a part of my youth and all that and everything and um well the world isn't sort of quite as good now is it with uh, uh filthy and lemmy and fast eddie uh not mucking about and uh making music or every, or you know this that and the other so yeah we miss we miss these three blokes don't we we really do but that, don't you love that cover i think it's better than the uh the sort of the normal original sort of pressing that everyone's probably got it's a great picture of the of the lads there so golden years ep dutch version lovely stuff see i heard most of the songs 
on this before I'd heard the studio albums. So when I got the studio albums when I was a kid, I was a bit disappointed because they, they're not as fast and furious, are they? But um, anyway, let's get to it, shall we? All right, God, I'm rabbiting on, aren't I? So number 23, at number 23, um, I've chosen this one. Now, yeah, uh, the year was 1992. The record label was Epic and Motorhead put out this record called March or Die, and it sort of got the not very good version of Ted Nugent's uh, catch, uh, Cat Scratch Fever on it, and it just sort of limps along, and it's a bit sort of uh, Los Angeles hair metal sort of, sort of thing, isn't it? I just sort of thing going on. Of course, there's a, a Hellraiser from the film. Ozzy did that too, didn't he? And then there's the song that Lemmy wrote with Ozzy called uh, I Ain't No Nice Guy. That's quite a nice song, really, isn't it? But... Uh, this sort of unfortunately is one Motet record that I really can't say many good things about. I like the artwork though, good cover. I've got a big poster of it. My mate Tony uh, gave me a poster that I was quite happy to get that. It's on my wall, you can't see it now. But uh, so yeah, this is sort of uh, the bottom of the heap, I'm afraid. Uh, March or Die from 1992. Now, next in the pile, this is sort of from one of the the sort of newer records, if you like. Um, they did a string, didn't they, in the 2000s, a string of uh, sort of new records. And for me, this is sort of the, the weakest, the weakest of the bunch. And I'm talking about uh, Motorizer from 2002 on Steam Hammer Records. Steam Hammer, they did take the name from Steam Hammer, the, the, uh, the great psychedelic blues band, didn't they? But anyway, Motorizer sort of starts off with Run Around Man. It's got that, I call it new metal. At, it's sort of about a minute and a half, two minutes, and it sort of goes into this sort of chuggy breakdown. That sort of it sort of spoiled the whole record for me a little bit. I can't, I haven't quite recovered from that. Uh, I'm quite sensitive. But teach you how to sing the blues. That's that's a, a nice number and a, and rock out. And I guess I just can't stand that line, the the rock out cock out thing. I just I just don't like it. And uh, uh, English Rose is sort of the same as Christine, isn't it? Which is a much better song on a different album. But so unfortunately, uh, Motorizer. Is going to be coming in at number 22 but if you've never heard it it's worth a listen obviously but uh it's definitely the weakest of the later era records motorizer now next another sort of late uh period uh motorhead record um now i think if i'm not mistaken the record i was just saying wasn't i when i was in the tokyo record shop and this this record was playing uh, and it sort of gave me a warm fuzzy glow and I felt sort of thankful uh, that Motet had been in my life but this was the record that was playing actually because it was 2010 and um, I'm talking about this one the world is yours there's a nice sort of silver version of this too isn't there I've got that but I thought I'd just show the normal one again there's, oh, there's sort of there's never a Motet record with sort of no bad songs and there's always at least four or five maybe six really really good songs and some sort of I don't want to call it filler, but I think you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Some uh, what are the good songs in here? Get back in line is a good uh, boogie number. I, I like that song. Um, Devils in my head. It's quite a rager. Uh, it's a good song. And uh, what else? Uh, Outlaw. Uh, it's a good one. Wait for the snake. Uh, good songs. But uh, yeah, this again. This is sort of one of the the weaker ones. I think in the sort of later period of the band. The world is yours on the UDR. Uh, Motab music from 2010. The world is yours. It is now. Next, I don't like the cover on this. It's quite, isn't it? It's the only cover uh, with the sort of picture of the band sort of on it, isn't it? Well, except for some others. Sorry, we'll get to them though. But uh, I'm talking about this one, Overnight Sensation from 1996 on Steam Hammer again. Now. This record really sort of uh, starts off really, really uh, strongly. I love uh, Civil War, that riff. It's sort of a, almost like a sort of hardcore punk, Poison Idea-ish uh, riff. I love that song. And then it sort of goes straight into um, Crazy Like a Fox, which is a real sort of peppy uh, number. I like that song a lot. And then it sort of uh, it sort of goes into I Don't Believe a Word, which sort of is a bit of a dirgy one, isn't it? And then... Uh, Eat the gun and the title song, like the the overreaction, overnight, uh, overnight sensation. Uh, the song has got a really nice riff. It's sort of more of a old school Motorhead sort of riff um, to it. But B side, it sort of 
drops off a little bit but they put this quite high purely for um civil war and crazy like a fox because they're two great songs definitely worth uh giving it a listen i think it got reissued didn't it properly on vinyl two years ago i think next sorry a bit thirsty cheers so i'm not drinking the uh motel beer there i've drunk that it's empty now i've got a big massive uh one liter can of kaiser dom get me through this one next um we've done uh overnight sensation next same time period a uh, great cover on this one. Oh yes snake bite love now mm, what to say about this one it's hasn't it got motet's possibly worst song of all time on it night side but apart from that let's keep it positive dogs of war is a rager assassin that's a good song isn't it and uh, uh, well, uh take the blame it's not bad uh better off dead uh snake bite love but um it was i think they were sort of losing losing the way a little bit in this area in in this era weren't they the i don't i don't know i don't know how to explain it. i can't do these reviews that well but um the songwriting wasn't sort of quite up to par and uh, it's sort of a patchy record and it hasn't got any songs uh even though i've sort of put it higher i don't know why i did that i put it higher than overnight uh, sensation it's um maybe overall it's a little bit stronger as a, an album but it hasn't got any rippers uh, as good as uh, Civil War on it, but nevertheless, not bad. Uh, Snake Bite Love from 1998 on Steam Hammer. Next, looks sort of similar cover, doesn't it? The next one, of course, I'm talking about Sacrifice. Now, Sacrifice is a heavy record. In fact, some people don't like it because they say it doesn't sound. Let's get rid of this. I'm gonna knock it over. Let's. Uh, um, yeah, anyway, uh, some people say it's sort of too heavy. It doesn't sound like Motet. It's sort of uh, down-tuned or whatever. But it's quite a raging record, the Sacrifice. Great song. Sex and Death, two minute long. It's two minutes. Really short, sharp song. And uh, I like the song Dog Face Boy on this. A lot of people might hate that song, but it's got quite a bit of a shuffle. Mickey D's not sort of very good at shuffling. He doesn't shuffle, but uh, sort of got a nice groove, a nice shuffle to that song. But... Um, some of the riffs on this record sort of sound like uh, a bad quality sort of crust punk band. They're sort of too me heavy metal, if you know what I mean. Motet, Motet are not a heavy metal band, are they? They're a rock and roll band. And uh, so this sort of reminds me of our Painkiller. I know it's sort of by Judas Priest, totally different record, I know. But sort of, for me, Painkiller is sort of too heavy uh, to be Judas Priest. So sort of similar in that way. But it's got a great cover. I like the cover on that. And uh, yeah sacrifice from 1995 on steam hammer records again out of germany sacrifice heavy heavy record next we are motet now this was the tour i saw them on uh in umeda at umeda heat beat in 2000 because they did play god save the queen they covered uh, the sex pistols god save the queen on this record i don't like it sorry but uh, it's got this song, this uh, record's got some uh, really raging, raging songs, especially See Me Burning. It's a good song to open up with, isn't it? That's a, that's a rager. And is there some people sort of complaining about a slow dance? I like that song. Come on, what are you talking about? It's a good song. And Stay Up Jail's good. And then it's got the long band, doesn't it? One more fucking time. It's too long. It's like a six minute song. And then, of course, We Are Moted, which is. Uh, a sort of classic uh, Motet song. I bought this really cheap. I, I couldn't believe it. I found it in this record shop called uh, Time Bomb in Osaka, which is sort of quite not notorious for its sort of high prices. And they had this in there for sort of, about, was it like 1,500 yen, something like that, crazy? Crazy, so of course, I snapped that up quick smart. But this is the record that Waka sort of bought out in that bar back then and sort of got me back into buying Motet records. So thank you, Waka. And yeah. Give it a listen. We are Motet. Great title. Simple to the point. Now, next record. I love this record. And again, I was sort of on the internet yesterday a bit, and uh, people were sort of like, it's not saying many good things about it, but you know that band uh, Leatherface, a punk band from England. A lot of people say they sort of, they sound like Motet. Now, for me, they sort of sound like uh, this record the most 
from Motet. Motet, Hammered. It's quite a melodic record, but it's melodic in a good way. I, I mean, I love the song, especially Side A, to me, is flawless. It really is. I mean that. It's, it's I mean, it starts off, walk a, crooked, walk a Crooked Mile, down the line. Such a great song. And it goes into Brave New World, fantastic. Uh, Voices, from the, Voices from the War, and then Mine or Mine. It's sort of great A side to this record. It sort of dips off a bit on the B side. But this, I hate this word, but I'm going to say it underrated record i think from motet hammered from 2002 on steam hammer again check it out it's a great record hammered next this is quite a famous sort of motet record i think isn't it um this one talking about 1916 i played it this morning because i hadn't played it for quite a while uh, it does have some great songs on it i'm so bad baby i don't care uh but I, I go into Brazil, I can't stop, sorry, I can't, I don't like that song, and they, they, they used to play it live, didn't they, quite often, and uh, sort of didn't, didn't, uh, didn't enjoy that. I like the Nightmare Dreamtime, quite a sort of frightening song, and uh, they got, of course, the Ramones tribute, which is quite simply called Ramones, they were good mates, weren't they, Motet and the Ramones, quite sort of similar bands, weren't they, really, in, in a way, but uh, yeah, this is a good record, I don't know, Patchy, and uh, of course, Filthy, does play on this record so we love we love filthy feel don't we and uh there are four piece with wurzel in the band too so 1916 not bad not bad not bad indeed give it a listen if you wish now the next one was the last record that motet sadly put out and uh, it was not a bad way to go out in my opinion talking about of course bad magic from 2015 this is a, a strong strong record it's sort of one of the stronger ones of the late uh era victory or die thunder and lightning firestorm hotel uh great 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 songs and of course they did the cover version of sympathy for the devil now i'm not a Rolling stones fan at all but uh, i think they they did a pretty good job of covering that song they did and uh it was quite a strong way to sort of uh, go out, in my opinion. So, Bad Magic from 2015 on UDR, uh, Motep Music. Bad Magic. Good record. Next, this one. Now, this one has, sorry, this one, this next record has some raging, oh, tasty, raging songs on it. Absolute rippers. And it's a great title. Bastards. Oh, because Motep were originally called Bastards, weren't they? But they sort of changed their name. Some head probably a wise choice. But burner, oh, and it, it's it is quite literally a burner. They sort of named that song properly, didn't they? But um, unfortunately, it's got born to raise hell. Well, yeah, and um, don't let daddy kiss me. Now it's quite brave. I think it really was to sort of uh, tackle the sort of subject matter of child abuse. But it's quite a painful. So, oh, can you see the thing? Ding, ding, ding. It's quite a sort of painful song to listen to. But Death or Glory, another absolute rager. So this is why it gets sort of quite high. It's quite uh, high in the pile there because, uh, yeah, it's for those sort of uh, rip-roaring numbers like uh, Burner and Death or Glory. So, bastards. Oh, see, I've got me bastards uh, hooded sweatshirt on to match in. Look at that. Great. So, bastards from 1993. On ZYX, didn't they sort of screw it up? You couldn't buy this record, could you? They sort of really didn't do a uh, good distribution or anything on it. So I think Motet were quite rightly a little bit angry. And they never did another record with that label again. And quite rightly so. Bastards. Maybe they were talking about ZYX. ZYX. They were bastards, maybe. Next. Now, a lot of people rate this record very highly. Not so much for me. Um, the production, Bill Laswell production on it sort of kills it a bit for me, I don't know. Um, people get a bit surprised when I, but this is a nice Japanese person, people get a bit surprised when I sort of don't rave about this record as much as maybe some other people do. But it's got some great songs on it, of course, Me Machine, The Claw, that's a ripper, isn't it? And of course, the title track. Uh, like, ah, the good thing about this, I suppose, was that Pete Gill uh, played drums on it, didn't he? And he's the sort of second best motet drummer that they ever had i think 
uh, from the mighty Saxon. I love Saxon. But yeah, it's quite a heavy record. Weird production from Mr. Laswell there. Don't know. I'm not still, I'm, I, still haven't saw, I still haven't quite come to grips with his uh, production decisions on this record. But it is a classic. Many people, most people love this record. So, or oh, Gasmatron from 1986. Wow, it's old, isn't it? 1986. It's a long time ago. But uh, it's a great cover, though. Joe Patagno's uh, one of his best artworks, I think on that record next now i've sort of got a strange reason for sort of putting this rec next record sort of quite a little bit higher and uh, it's because i sort of really like the the color scheme that they used on it it reminded me of zz top the old zz top records the first album and another one of the early records had the sort of same color scheme sort of in the desert sort of uh, feel to it maybe it doesn't show up well on, on this camera but it's funny because they do that song lost woman blues which is all it's sort of bluesy as the title implies and that's sort of almost like a zz topish number so i was like that that really attracted me uh, to this record and uh, the first song heartbreaker is a really is a really strong really strong song too so it's funny how certain things can sort of make you see a record in in a different light just things like artwork and song titles and just the production this that and the other it's not always the songs that uh, might you know attract you to a record so i like this record a lot i think it's Definitely one of the stronger ones from the late period, from 2013, Aftershock on UDR Motorhead Music. Great, great record. Next, we're going deep, deep, deep now, aren't we? 1987 GWR Records, Rock and Roll. Now, this is a, this is a good record, isn't it? Come on, let's uh, let's not mess about. Uh, and I, 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 I definitely sort of. Uh, bashed this one a little bit when i was being cheeky with me mates and everything but it is a good record and it's got some great songs on it except that it's got eat the rich on it one of those sort of songs but black heart is a rager uh traitor uh the wolf and of course it's got phil campbell on guitar and Wur Wur sorry wurzel was in the band too uh, at this point but uh phil was still young wasn't he when this came out 1987 and of course filthy drums on it too i know a lot of mates sort of say this is the sort of last great motorhead record i've heard that said and well you know i don't know doesn't really matter does it but, uh, but anyway rock and roll on gwr from 1987 now the next one is a record that i you know I, i've just said i sort of uh, said cheeky things about rock and roll but a lot of my mates don't like this next record it baffles me i'm like what what are you talking about it's a great record it's the second best record of the late period in my opinion I'm talking about kiss of death this record is amazing it's like there's only got one bad song on it god was never on your side it's the sort of ballad but apart from that it's just one amazing song after another and especially at the end the going down the last song so listen to this record all the way through and then it gets to going down like the 12th the 12th song on the record it's oh, it's one of motorhead's best songs in my opinion it's absolutely fantastic and uh yeah it's um i don't really understand why people sort of uh, uh make make a fool of this record because uh i think it's fantastic kiss of death from 2006 on steam hammer this is a masterpiece in my opinion and the second best late period motet record check it out lovely stuff next we're going way way back to 1977 uh and we're going to be on parole there's two different sleeves and i've got them both but this is just one one sort of black and white sleeve version uh the motet they, they didn't get released did it they sort of recorded it in uh, 1979 and it didn't come out until 1970 no, they recorded it in 77, it came out in 79, that's right, uh, because uh, that was a record label thing, and uh, Motorhead weren't happy, so they sort of say this isn't, this isn't a sort of official uh, release, don't they, so, but uh, I've included it anyway, and of course, on this record, uh, Larry Wallace was still playing guitar, and uh, Lucas Fox played drums on Lost johnny but they had quite a different sound didn't they back in the day it was sort of almost like a sort of pub rock sort of stiff record sort of type of a sound more punky and uh it's a good record obviously so many classics on it isn't there so on 
Parole from 1977. Next, this record came out. I bought it new when it came out, and uh, it blew me away. I'd sort of given up hope a bit, maybe, on Motorhead at that time. And then they, they came out with this, and my, oh, I think you know what I'm talking about, don't you? I'm talking about this masterpiece of a record called Inferno from 2000 and four there's not one one bad song on it it comes straight out of the gate with terminal show into killers in the name of tragedy tragedy suicide life's a bitch down on me in the black fight in the year of the wolf keys to the kingdom smiling like a killer and then whore house blues double lp not one bad song every song is catchy has great riffs the production's amazing I can't say one bad thing about it. I played this record to death. It got ding. They've got a CD of it too. I think it's a masterpiece. Uh, so it's really high. It's like what, number seven or number six in my list. So you can see uh, how, how much I sort of care about this record. I think it is an absolute masterpiece. Motet Inferno. If you haven't listened to this record, stop what you're doing right now. Get on the internet. Uh, go down to your local record shop. Get it. Get it, get it, get it. It will change your life. Maybe. It's a great record anyway. Motorhead Inferno. Lovely stuff. Classic. Next, we're getting into the sort of top five, aren't we? And you know, this is difficult because, uh, as I said, let's not sort of take the ranking too seriously. But I uh, put the first album next. Motorhead, Motorhead. Nice Japanese pressing. Oh, there's three or four, I think three sort of different uh, Japanese pressings of this uh, one with the red obi here, one with the yellow obi. I've got it behind me over there. And one with the green obi, and I can never find the one with the green obi. So if you're looking in and you've got a green obi sat in your kitchen, give me a call. Yes, obviously it's a classic from 1977. And um, by this time, um, that sort of beefed up a little bit. The sound and Eddie Clark was in the band and everything. And so this is sort of really the start of everything really isn't it this record this is where things began so motorhead motorhead on chiswick records from 1977 next now this one i bought this when it came out actually and it was a little bit of a disappointment sort of coming after the record that came out before it which is a, a classic so of course i'm talking about Iron Fist from 1982, UK2 on Bronze Records. Now it's sort of, I don't know, it's got some amazing songs on it, hasn't it? It is a classic. Uh, it's got a few weaker numbers on it, but uh, I really like that song. I'm the Doctor. That's such a great song. I love that song. And uh, what else? What's uh, Loser, Heart, Heart of Stone, of course, the uh, title track. I think they still played that live right up until the end, but they didn't play. I might be wrong, I don't think I am. They didn't play any other songs off this record at all for ages, did they? I don't think so. If, if I'm wrong, please let me know. But uh, Iron Fist, it's a masterpiece, isn't it? Let's uh, make no bones about that. Iron Fist, 1982. Oh, we're moving into the top three. Nope, top four. This was really difficult. Uh, in 1978, Motorhead put out two records, didn't they? And I'm talking about bomber and overkill two flawless classics got japanese press in here and um, so let's put these two together because they sort of came out in the same year uh, 78 but so many classic songs stay, uh, stay clean capricorn uh, lawman dead man dead man tell no no class damage cage i could go on and on, on you know these records back to front they're classics they're masterpieces no band has ever sort of topped they've tried many have tried all of them have failed really haven't they to sort of a lot of bands try and sound like motorhead you can't it's sort of almost impossible but i mean bands that have a motor motorhead influence are quite quite good to listen to aren't they quite fun to listen to but you can never ever ever top these two records two masterpieces from motorhead nine they put two records in 1978 how crazy is that two classics overkill and the bomber well we're in the top two and i might get some angry letters about my choice here i think i will but uh it doesn't matter i told i said let's not take the ranking too seriously but i'm going to put this one in at number two it, it is it is a flawless record 
obviously it's a it's a classic it's a masterpiece uh it's got motorhead's most famous songs and obviously uh, the title track and it's got the motorhead song that i heard first in my life love me like a reptile i read out the lyrics badly at the beginning of this episode and uh, look at that cover remember that i don't like um anthrax too much and scott ian and all that but his uh, story the funny story about uh, who are these mexicans and how do they play so fast that's a funny story isn't it so i've got to give a bit of credit to uh, scott ian for that maybe laugh but uh the american pressing of this it's funny it's got um uh it's got the chase is better than the catch is the first song on side one and the different picture on the back so americans sort of got a bit of a rough deal didn't they with that because it should start with ace of spades it's a bit strange to sort of start the album with chase is better than the catch but uh obviously a masterpiece can't say enough uh, good things about this record one of the best records of all time the ace of spades from 1980 bronze records of course now we're down to the last one aren't we and of course you already can guess what it's going to be now i chose this as number one because it's the motorhead record that i've played the most in the past four or five years i think it's a masterpiece people hated it when it came out didn't they um of course i'm talking about another perfect day now lemmy loved this record didn't he if you sort of see interviews with him he always sort of says how how he how much he likes this record but of course there was a lot of turmoil in the band at that time with brian robertson so and everything and he got kicked out didn't he so he only did this uh, this one record with him but to me i mean i really wish that they hadn't got rid of brian because can you imagine what they might have done because the sort of sound that they went from this it's melodic the guitar playing is sort of unbelievable i think it's probably the best thing the best guitar work that uh, brian robinson did in his whole career and that sounds something isn't it because he was obviously in thin lizzie but shine i've got the 12 inch single of shine i want to put that on i have to play it about five or six times in a row because it's such a good song it really gets me going it's sort of it gives me goosebumps actually it really does it's such a it's such a good song and uh yeah this is sort of a really oh it's just a classy it's a classy classy record and i think it was unfairly maligned in the day and it is i saw someone yesterday as i was sort of looking on the internet a little bit they put this which is my favorite and uh, march or die which is my least favorite they put those together and said that these two of the worst two motel records and i was just didn't say anything but sort of like a bit of a, a strange opinion but we've all got opinions haven't we and i'm sort of old now and I, I try not to argue about things it's sort of we're not 12 years old are we uh we shouldn't be arguing about music in the playground or in the pub but uh, anyway i digress i'm a dissident digressor um this is my favorite motorhead record what's yours let me know in the comments you don't have to do that doesn't matter but uh that was a lot of fun to go through those records i think i pulled a few of them out yesterday a couple i hadn't played for a while and uh, it's always a, a pleasure to sort of listen to motorhead and we do miss them don't we don't we because there's not really going to be a band like them ever again there's not not going to be another sort of rock and roller like lemmy he was sort of one of a kind wasn't he so we do uh, we do miss the lads don't we but we've still got the music to uh keep us company and it's a it's a joy uh, to have these records in me collection so thanks for listening everyone uh, i'm gonna have a, another bit of beer here and maybe listen to some more uh motel but until next time next time i'm gonna be tackling heavy metal many kinds of heavy metal it's gonna be a lot of fun so until next time stay healthy and stay clean